Welcome. In this video, I'd just like to tell you about, a little bit about what WordPress is. WordPress is free web-based software that you can use to create a beautiful website or blog. It is free and open source. And what this really means is that it has a wonderful community of developers and users who are constantly contributing to the software. And that's one of the reasons why it is so popular and it is so good. It was originally created as a blogging platform but has now developed into a full-blown content management system or CMS. It is web-based as I mentioned before so therefore it works on PC, Mac, Linux and with the use of apps you can actually use it in mobile devices such as your iPad, your iPhone, Blackberry or your Android devices. WordPress has become increasingly popular and it currently powers over 60 million websites. It has thousands of extensions and themes and this is what has really made WordPress so popular and so powerful because there are so many different layouts and you can really create a beautiful website with the themes and the, 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 the extensions, the, the, the plugins really make WordPress so so nimble and you can do pretty much anything with WordPress. It is available in two flavors at WordPress.com which is a fully hosted version but there are some limitations in as to what you can use these sites for and a lot of the, the, the features are premium features you would have to pay for and additionally there is the version available at wordpress.org which is self-hosted which you install on your hosting account or domain and this is the version that we're going to focus on throughout this video course so in the next set of videos I'm going to take you through how you can install WordPress create your site edit your site customize it and the beautiful thing about WordPress is that you can do all of this in your browser and without having to edit any HTML and this is why it really is so easy to use so join me in the next set of videos as I show you how powerful WordPress is in this video we are going to install WordPress from our control panel so I'm just, just presuming that you've already got a hosting account with control panel and you've registered your domain so the first thing you want to do is go and look for software slash services and depending on your hosting account this may be slightly different so here you see softaculous and a popular one is also Fantastical Deluxe, or you may see Auto Install. And if you don't see any of these, then you just want to contact your hosting provider and just find out exactly which auto installer they have. They will basically pretty much work the same. So, you know, so I'm just actually just going to go ahead and use Softaculous because that's the software that is available in this hosting account and what you will do is you see a list of scripts software that you can install using this auto installer and WordPress is the first one so I'm just going to go ahead and click install and then you have a couple of options here and the first thing you want to do is choose the location from which you are going in which you're going to install WordPress so you go through your domains and in this case I'm going to install on wpvideocyclic.com and the next thing is the directory in which you're going to install WordPress now if you leave this area blank then it will install in the root of your domain so in this case it would install at wpvideocyclic.com but if you type something in this area such as news or blog then it will install at wpvideocyclic.com forward slash and blog and that will be the location of your site now 
most of the other settings are pretty straightforward. So the next thing is you want to give your site a name. So in this case, I'm going to call it WP Video Sidekick. And one of the things I just like about Softacular Sense, it's not available in all the other installers, it's just the ability to customize this part. Of course, I give a site description and become a WP Pro. And really, the, the more unique you can make your insta installation is the safer your site will be. So the next thing we, thing we look at is the admin accounts. And by default, it will say admin and advise that you change this because this is a serious security vulnerability. So you want to change that and of course, create a unique password. Now, because this is a, de a demonstration video, I'm just going to leave it the username as admin and just create a password because of course um, I'm not going to use this for any serious purposes and you just want to add your email and this will be used when for communications from the site to you so if there are updates if there are comments to be approved on your site then it will go to that email so then we just click install and this will happen pretty quickly, as you will find. And, and there you go. It's pretty much finished. And that's how quick, quickly it works. And what has happened in the background is that it, all the technical stuff, the, the MySQL databases, the installing of WordPress. And you will see that the location is, of your site is wpvideosidekit.com slash blog. And the administrative URL is wpvideosidekick.com forward slash blog wp admin and that is where you would go to log into the back end of your site so just just go and we're going to go and check out the site and what you will see here is one of the default themes and just some content that has been created just so that your site isn't there and you can get a feel of what the site will look like and of course, there's a test post, there's a test page, and of course, you will want to edit it, and this is what we are going to do in the next set of videos, and that is to customize our site. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can install WordPress manually through FTP or File Transfer Portal, and we're going to need a couple of things, and the first thing you're going to need is the WordPress software so you can get it at www.wordpress.org and we just click this button that says download WordPress and you want to always come here to get the latest version of WordPress now the reason that we install WordPress manually is just to get our own set of the vulnerabilities that occur when we use auto installers such as Fantastico Deluxe because this allows us to just customize the installation and uh, one of the things that we want to do is always get the latest version of WordPress because sometimes when you use an auto installer it isn't the latest version so just select download WordPress I already have it on my desktop so I'm not going to download it again and the next thing we're going to need is an FTP client. Now, you can get one free called FileZilla, which is also open source at filezilla-project.org. So that's filezilla-project.org. And what you want to do is get the download FileZilla client and not the download FileZilla server. So that's the client. And what this FTP client does is allows you to just upload multiple files to your server and at a faster rate. Because when you upload files to cPanel, sometimes there are limitations on the file size. So this just gets around that problem, allows you to install pretty quickly. So you just go ahead and download the files of the client and 
then you would activate the software as you would do any other software and when you do that it will look like this and uh, just one thing if you go back when you download the wordpress package it's in a zip file so you will have to unzip it and then you go into filezilla and just a quick tutorial on how to connect using filezilla so at the very top here you'll have host and what you put here is ftp dot your site name in this case i'm using wp video side kick.com so that's ftp not www dot or http so it's ftp your site name dot com and then the username in most cases will be the same username you use to log into cpanel so that's the username and password for cpanel and the port you don't have to put it the default should be 21 but you don't have to enter anything there and uh, once you do that you just select quick connect and you will connect to your server and what you you see something similar to this on the left hand side will actually be the files on your desktop and on the right hand side will actually be the files at your server, at your hosting account. So what I'm actually going to do, because I, you have to find the location where you've downloaded the WordPress package. So I'm just going to go up back to the screen that you'll probably see. And to go up a folder, you just click this, very, this folder at the very top with the two dots beside it. And you will probably see something like this and on the server side something like this okay so in my case I would go to users then I go to documents chances are you will have the WordPress package in your downloads folder I'll just go to documents. I know this where I have it. Let me go back up. So users right, so I go to my documents folder and WordPress, WordPress 3.8.1, and, and it's the folder that's unzipped. And on the right hand side, you will go to your public HTML folder, and this is just where you have all the public files for your website. And once you get in there, now what you're seeing, you will see some files in here. Chances are, if you just activated this domain, and this is the only domain you have in your hosting, you don't see anything there. Well, I do have WordPress in, already installed in my main site. Well, the site that we're going to use is actually an add-on domain. And if this is the case where you're using an add-on domain, you just search for it. And in this case, WP Video Sidekick. So if this was your main, let me just go back one step. If this was your main domain on the hosting account, and that's where you wanted to upload WordPress then once you get inside your HTML public HTML folder you would be in the root of that domain and this is where you would upload the WordPress files from the left well, like I said in my case I am uploading the files to an add-on domain so I select wpvideopsychic.com and now I'm in the root of that domain so what we want to do is just select all of these files and we can do two things we can drag the files over to this side and drop it or we can just right click and select upload now this will take some time to upload to our site so while that is happening I'm just going to pause this video and we'll pick up in another video
just one more quick thing um back in filezilla now if you didn't want to install wordpress in the root of your domain like i said i'm in the root if you look at the top here it says remote site probably underscore html wpvdesagic.com so i'm in the root of that domain but if you wanted to install wordpress in a subdirectory so say you wanted to install in wp video sidekick forward slash blog then you would just right click create their directory name the directory blog select ok then you would have opened that folder and then you would have uploaded all the wordpress files from the package into this area okay so i'm actually just going to jump over to my site so while the package is uploading if you go to your the home page of your site you'll probably see something that looks like this index of and so there's nothing there right now and and that's fine that's how it's supposed to look and when wordpress has completed the uploads which it's it's just about finish and it, it will take some time because it is a large package if we go back over so at our site now the, all the files for wordpress have been uploaded so if we refresh then you'll see something very different now you just see this message here that says there doesn't seem to be a wp config file and there's a button here that says create a configuration file so you go ahead and select that button and then you come to another page that says you will need the following the database name database username database password database host etc and to get all of these what we have to do is go to our cpanel as a hosting account and go ahead and just create a mysql database now, i personally prefer to use the wizard because it just does it in a nice systematic way so we select mysql database wizard and this is where we get to really customize the installation so you can just put some random characters there and you want to ensure that you have something like notepad or even a bit of paper to write down you know all the information that we're going to create here so i have notepad ready so i go to the next step Then I create a username for that database and then I need to create a password. So there is a built-in password generator so you can just use it, copy and just click this box that says I have copied this password in a safe place. Use password and it will just populate the password fields. And you want to go ahead and just type password paste it there and then you select create user so passwords do not match so let me just paste them again and then we need to retype this bit at the top create user and then it would just say that the user ha has been created with this password so we are going to copy this information the user name over to our, our notepad file and we also need the database name so we need to copy that over as well so database name so if we go back to our site you see the ask for database name username password database host and the table prefix so if we go back so we've copied the database username and the database name and we have a password and this box here that says all privileges we just want to tick it so that we can have all the privileges which we will need to you know create this 
use this database for our WordPress installation. So we just select next step. And we just have a summary of the username, just in case you didn't get to copy it in the last page. You absolutely need to copy this information without the quotation marks. Okay, so if we go back over to our site, then this button at the bottom, we can just select let's go. And you will be taken to this screen where you will enter your database name. So we just go back to our notepad file. And we have a database name. So the name and the user. So we copy all of that over. And then the password goes there. Now for the database host in 99% of cases, this will be the default. You don't have to change this. And But if you enter this and it doesn't work, then you will have to contact your hosting company just to find out what it is that they use as their database hosts but in 99% of the cases this will work and the, the table prefix now you can just add a few letters and numbers just to customize this as well and it's as you see the little note here says it's useful if you want to run multiple WordPress installations so I'm just going to go ahead and select submit and you will just get this message that says okay you made it through this part of the installation WordPress can now communicate with your database and you just run the install and then you would just have a few more customizations and some of this will look familiar to you from when we did the installation automatically so you name your site WP video sidekick the username you want to create something unique I usually just use a combination of letters and numbers you know, never use admin and so now we can just go back to our notepad so our WP username we need to just save that and the password and we just need to create something that's strong Try using some common letters and capital letters, and what I'll do is just go back WP password. So if we go and I'm just creating a random password because this is just for demonstration. And if we go back here, and we just paste it in, and the next thing you'd have to do is enter an email so that you can receive updates. And this would be the email that will be used for communication. And the last field that we have here is the privacy field, and you can just leave this ticks up, ticked, allow search engines to index this site. And then you just select install. And then you will just see this screen here that says success, WordPress has been installed, and you've selected a username and of course the password that you selected. And if you just click the button that says login it will take you to the login page login to your site but I'm not going to do that just yet I'm just going to go back to the home page of our site and now you can see that instead of the message that we had there 
which was pretty much blank. Now we have a site installed with one of the default themes for WordPress and just some default um, a default post widgets, etc. So in the next set of videos, I'll take you through exactly how you can customize the site, change the themes, plugins, etc. Okay, so that's how you install WordPress manually through FTP. In this video, I just want to introduce you to the the WordPress dashboard, um, and you can see where we are here at our home page, and you can see one of the default themes that was installed when we installed WordPress. And to get to our dashboard, we just need to put a forward slash and then wp admin, wp dash admin. to our main website address and then select enter and it will just take us to a page where we can log in and you would put your username and your password which you would have created when you were installing WordPress so if we just select login and you will just see a few quick links here on the right hand side to say WordPress news and you know, some other and you can open and close these just by clicking on the arrow beside the label you can do here and you can also just move these around you know, if you want it for convenience and on the left hand side you will see the main tabs the main op options uh, first one is a link to your, the home page of our dashboard which if you click this link it will take you back to this exact location and uh, you see a link here for updates which you should pay attention to whenever there is an update you will see a number here let me just click on updates real quick and uh, you will see that it says that you have the latest version of WordPress plugins are all up to date your themes are all up to date and this is this is important for especially for security as well as the functionality of WordPress and your plugins and themes so you want to ensure that as soon as there's an update that you do go ahead and update it and you also want to create backups also as well before you do update especially when it's a large update like the WordPress software itself and we'll cover backups in another video but you know for now you will see the other options here on the left hand side and if there if there are additional options you will see and it will just pop out but if you were to go to this post page you would also see you know some of these options that came you'll see on the left hand side here the options that were previously on the pop-out so if we go back to our dashboard the first thing you want to do is a bit of house cleaning and we do that by going to settings and permanent now the other options that are on the, the side here we will cover these in future videos so don't worry about it but for now we're just going to go settings and permalinks and we want to adjust our permalinks our permalink is basically the, the URLs that are created when we create content on our site and by default WordPress creates a page ID for each posted page that we create now what it does is that it also puts this page ID into the URL structure and well this is not good for search engine optimization and quite frankly it doesn't really make sense to people it makes a lot of sense to the software but not much sense to, to regular people so let me just show you something real quick if we were to go to pages and select all pages and by default a sample page would have been created and if we select view 
let me just open this in a new tab you will see where it says our website address and then page ID equals two so of course this this is ugly it doesn't make any sense and you would you do want to change this so to change this to put it in a format that's a lot more friendly let's just go back to our permalinks then you just go down to the option that says post name click the radio button beside it and you will see under custom structure that a change has been made and what you want to do is save this save changes and if we go back to our sample page and just refresh you will see that it no longer has the quest sign p equals two and it actually just says sample page which makes a lot more sense so now that we've sorted out you know our permalink structure then we can go in our next video and look at you know, creating posts and pages in this video i just want to quickly you know explain the differences between posts and pages and really the best way to do this is to actually show you so if we go to this very popular website if you look along the top here in our menu then pages like your privacy policy about us contact these are pages and the information on these pages don't change very often and usually you wouldn't put comments allow comments on these pages so pages are, are, are ideal for for information that's not really time sensitive but information that you want your users to be able to access at all times on the other hand and and pages are actually very static so so they're more static on the other hand posts are tend to be time sensitive for example all these links here on the side are for posts and if you if you look here it's like news updates this one is five minutes ago this one is 14 minutes ago etc and so we use posts for information that is more time sensitive like I said like news and updates about your site or your business and generally you you do allow comments and posts uh, but it's totally up to you 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 can remove comments from posts and we'll, we'll take a look at that in a future video and you you can add comments to pages you do have the option to but this is just to quickly show you some of the differences between posts and and, and pages and one more thing about posts is that they tend to appear in your site as you can see uh, here in reverse chronological order so newer posts will show up first so eventually what will happen is that you if you have a lot of posts then depending on how you set your website up then all the posts will eventually disappear off your front page okay so that's just a quick overview of the difference between posts and pages in this video we're going to create a post and here we are at our home page of our website and as you can see here there is a post that was already created called hello world and by default posts will appear on your home page and there is an option to change that and we look at that in a future video but this post of course was created when we installed wordpress and it's just there for you to get a feel of how posts look on your website so to create a new post, we of course have to log into our admin area at WP Admin. And from our menu, select Posts. And we will see a list of all the posts that have been created on our website. And as you can see our hello world post is here and we have the option to edit it 
quick edit trash or view the post now you should delete this post because of course it's there for demonstration purposes but I won't delete it just yet as I want you to see how it will be affected once we create a new post so to do that we select add new from the top there and before we actually create the post there are a few things on this page I want you to become familiar with the first thing is at the very top here in the right hand corner is the screen options now this allows you to just customize what options appear on this screen and you will see that a couple of boxes are already ticked formats categories tags featured image and if you go and look at the right hand side here you will see format categories and tags so if you wanted to remove those options you would just untick the boxes and there are some additional options here that you probably do want to tick such as the discussion box and what that will do is allow you to control comments and chat back and ping backs on your posts okay the next thing we want to look at is the title of course you'd want to name your post and remember based on how we set up our permalinks the name of your post will appear in the URL okay and you you do have the option to adjust it and I will show you how to do this the next area is this area here which is our WYSIWYG editor now WYSIWYG is an acronym that stands for what you see is what you get so essentially whatever you type here and is basically how it will look on the front end of your site if we go back over to the right hand side you will see a couple of options right now the the post is in draft status because we haven't typed in anything and we haven't selected publish so once we'd finish we'd select publish and uh, there are a couple of other options such as the visibility right by default all posts will be set to public but you do have the option to select the post as password protected where everyone will be able to see the post but they will be prompted to enter a password to actually see the content and uh, another option is the private option which no one will actually be able to see these posts at all except for your logged in users which you have granted access to such as your admin and editors etc and the password protected option is actually a great option to use to to offer content to your members paid content etc okay and if we go further down we see so let me set this back at public and you will see format now by default there's a standard format for all WordPress posts and that's what we are going to use but you do have some other options such as a side image video and what these options would do if you select them they will of course for example if you were to select image and you had an image in your post which is obviously why you'd want to select it it would just highlight how the post would be displayed on your website would highlight that image and the same for video audio etc now how it is displayed really does depend on the theme that you're using so that is something you would have to test out to see the results but for, for now we're going to use a standard format because that will allow us to do to add all those types of media and also there are categories now this allows you to basically you know put your posts in particular in a particular order so for example if your website was about sports and you covered soccer and basketball then you could create a category just by adding add new category and name it soccer so all the posts that you had about soccer would go in that category you could just select it 
and it makes it a lot easier well for you in terms of keeping your website in order and also for your users who maybe are just interested in in soccer uh, or users who are just interested in basketball to access those posts and of course there are tags which is really more for search engine op optimization which just you know uh, allows you to you know give a description to say to say what your post is all about and you can also set a featured image which would show up say in an expert excerpt of your post on the front end of your site so that people can have an idea of what your post is all about now this video is actually getting a, little, a bit long so I'm going to pause here and in the next video we will actually create some content in our post okay so let's go ahead now and add some content and create our post now the first thing we want to do is to name our post so I'll just name this test post and I've already prepared some text to add and this is Latin so if it doesn't make any sense don't worry about it it's just first to have some text to play around with and <coughs> I mentioned you'll be able to edit the text in the WYSIWYG editor in a similar way that you would edit it in any word processor, word processor such as Microsoft Word. So you have the option to bold, add italics, strike throughs, and if you notice, if you just put your cursor over the icons, it will tell you exactly what it does. So you can add an unordered list, an ordered list, block codes, align, left, etc 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 okay and we have a we have a button here that says show or hide the kitchen sink and pressing this button will either remove or add that second line of options okay which would give us additional styling options such as adding paragraph tags heading tags just highlight text. So very quickly I'm just going to go and just highlight some text, make it bold highlight some more text let me undo that if I wanted to make this entire line a coat then I like these block codes and last but not least let's let's add a link so if we highlight the text and we select this button here that looks like a chain link and then we just put the destination that we want our link to go to you can name the link for your own purposes and you have the option to open the link in a new window or tab, which I like to do, so that visitors can easily get back to my site if the link is an external link. And all you have to do now is go over and select publish. But of course, as we mentioned, you could put <coughs> excuse me, you could put your post in a category I created two other categories just while I was testing and but I'm just going to add this post to the uncategorized because that's that was our default category and I won't add any tags or featured image you know, just just so that you can see exactly what the post would look like and I'll hit publish And just a few quick things. You would have seen the, the URL for this post would now include the name of the post, which is why the name is so important. And if you wanted to change it, you could just select edit. For example, if <coughs> the name of your post was very long and it created a long URL, you could just shorten it. 
but in this case I'm going to leave it as is <coughs> you just select OK and I'm going to go ahead and view the post <coughs> Okay, so there's our post with our styling, our bold, our coats, and our link, which if we tick it, will go to the destination that we have put in at google.com. Okay, now it's taking some time to load, but there you go, Google. Okay, now we go back to our site, and we just select visit site. So let me do this from dashboard. Select a new tab, wpvideosidekick.com. Select enter. And it's still showing our original post. Um, Maybe it's because I'm still logged in. Okay, let me open up another browser. Go to our home page. And, and there you go. There's our new post. And as you can see, the previous post, which was Hello World, now appears below our new post. And that's what will happen to new posts. The more and more posts you create, then they will fall down in the order. Okay, so that's it for this video. We will look at creating pages next. The process for creating a page is very similar to creating posts and to do this we go to pages and we will see a list of all our existing pages. A sample page was created during our installation of WordPress and again you should trash this page because of course it's there for demonstration but I won't do that just yet just so that you can see how pages will be displayed on a website when especially after we create a new page so to create the new page we just select add new and here we have our WYSIWYG editor similar to when we were creating a post and the first thing we want to do is name the page I'm going to call this page about me and again I prepared some text and the process is similar we can make the text bold etc in this case I'm going to use some of the to use this top line here use the heading one tag and okay let me undo that then we need to apply it to the to all of the text let me just press enter and separate this line of text and then so that first line has become a heading and I just center align it and you can just play around again with the text uh, underline this bit here and so on and so forth so after we've completed our editing, we can just go ahead and publish. Now, there are just a, a, a slightly different set of options for a page. And you remember when we were creating posts, we had categories over here on the right, but now instead we have page attributes. Now, if we go back up here to our screen options, let me just select discussion. So that which controls our comments and of course there's, there's an author option which which allows you to 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 assign an author to the the page now the author information actually doesn't show up for pages actually in posts so you know, if you ever wanted to change the author for your post, you could just select that option. But if we go back to page attributes now, 
what you can do here is select a parent page for this page so what would happen is that if we selected the sample page as a parent page then in our menu this page would appear below the sample page and we also have the option to select templates now the default template would be you know as it is the as it says the default layout for your website which <coughs> If we go to our home page, www.sidekick.com, and we go to our sample page, then this is our default template, our content on the right, and our sidebar on the left with our menu at the top and we have a footer here at the bottom. Now, if we go back to our so we also have the option to create a full width page which would remove the sidebars so that our content would take center stage and there's also a contributor page. Now, to be honest, I'm not quite familiar what this page does, but um it's something you can test out. Uh, different themes will give you different templates. This particular theme is a portfolio type theme, so it may have something to do with that. But like I said, depending on the the, the theme that you're using, different templates will be listed here. And you know, the, the best way to figure out what it does is just just test, create a test page, select a template, and see what happens. And if we are satisfied with our content, um, just one thing, I like to remove comments and chat box from my pages, but it's up to you. You can allow comments if you'd like, and we just go ahead and select publish. And again, our URL will include the name of our page, so it will be our main URL wpvideopsychic.com forward slash about me and again you can edit this URL you can view the page or you can get a short link and let's go ahead and view the page and There you go, an about me page, and the name of the page will be at the top, and our content. And if we go back to our home page, and visit our site, And again, because I'm logged in, it's not showing the update. So let me just go into another browser and head back over to our site. Okay, so I've refreshed the page and Just go to our home page and what you will see here now is that our new page, our about me page has been added to our menu. Now in most themes this will be the default action. Once you add a new page it will be added automatically to your main menu. Now again like I said it depends on the theme but in another video I'll show you how to create custom menus so that we can control exactly what appears in your menu menu areas because as you can imagine not every single page you create you'd want to be displayed in your menu for example if you have a private page for for members or a download page for your product you certainly wouldn't want that to be shown in your 
main navigation and additionally if you were to create a lot of pages then this your menu error would be would be um, quite jumbled so in another video I'll show you how to create custom videos but for now that's it for pages and yeah, that's it for this video in this video we'll take a look at how we can add media to our posts and pages and the first thing I want to do is introduce you to our media library and of course there's nothing in there because we haven't added any media so we're just going to select add new and what the media library does is it it stores all media that you upload directly to your WordPress site and you can put media in here to either use in your posts and pages or media to be download, downloaded by your users or, or visitors. So as you can see here it says we can simply drop files here drag and drop files or select files and below here it gives you a maximum upload file size of 8 megabytes now if you have files that are larger than 8 megabytes you'd have to use some alternative method of putting it on your site such as FTP or file transfer protocol but we'll take a look at that in a different video but um so now we're going to keep the files simple so I have some files here on my desktop video so I'll just drag that in um, also document and I've dropped those two files but let me just go back in so you can see that you can also select the files and on my desktop so I've already added the video and the PDF so I just want to add a an image I think I got there. Uh, the PDF. Oh, there you go. So I actually added. So from here, from the screen, you have the option to do some editing. Now let's start with the image. Now, if you select Edit, take it to another screen, and you can see our image. Now I plan to use this image for our about me page and there are a couple of things that I need to take note of here one of the things that happens when you upload the media to your media library is that a, an attachment page will be created so if you click view attachment page then there is a standalone page on WordPress that has your media and in this case it's an image so it's being displayed but for some of your media such as a word document then what would happen is you just see a link <coughs> excuse me and if you select that link you'd be able to download it go back to our edit page and of course an image so you have the option to add a caption which would appear below the image so if it's an about me image then you could just put my name and the alternative text is really for search engine optimization search engines can't read images they, they basically only read text so because it doesn't know what your image is about then this alternative text just 
lets the search engine know that this is an image of you and basically just lets lets it know what the image is all about and on the right hand side here you just have some additional information about the image the dimensions but in this field here is a direct link to the image okay so if you were to copy and paste in a new tab then you would see our image there you go okay so this video is getting a bit long so let me pause here and we'll pick up in another video okay so here we are back with our image also you should take into consideration that when you upload images to WordPress you have to take note of the file size now WordPress does do some optimization for you when you upload images but you may want to use a plugin such as WP Smush It or some desktop software to reduce the size of your images because large images especially if you take an image say from your camera will take long to load and they will slow down your site and not to mention well some of them won't even fit on your site and they can increase your hosting and bandwidth charges okay so if we go back to our media library and this time I want to take a look at a video so if we edit now when you add videos to your site WordPress will automatically try and, and embed them so as you can see here we have a, we had our image and, it, and we could see our image and now we have our video and we can see our video so we can just play our video but other files such as say Word documents and, and zip files and all these other things that you put into WordPress then you wouldn't be able to see them you just basically get a link to download it so the video is is pretty similar um, you have a description of the video here you have your direct link to the video online you have your attachment page and you can also use a short link for that page and let me just look at one more go back to our library And let's look at a a document. So again, of course, like I mentioned with documents, you wouldn't be able to see a preview. You wouldn't be able to see the image. Basically, you'd use a direct link. And if you view the attachment page, what will happen is that you basically get a link, and if you click that link, then the document will start to download from your site. Okay, so that's basically it for the for the media library. Just um, like, like I said, just to keep in mind that the upload size. In some cases, your hosting company may be able to increase the size so that you can upload larger documents and and that's basically it for our media library okay so now that we're more familiar with the media library then we can go ahead and add an image to our posts or pages as I mentioned I wanted to add an image to my about me page so if I just go back to pages select edit page and then I'm going to select the area where I want to put the image so I put my cursor right before 
the P. And I go to add media and we do have a couple of options. Now because we have media in a media library you'll see all the media listed here. And this is the image. So all I simply have to do is click on this image and it will be added to my page. But there are a couple of other options. You can insert directly from a URL. So for example if you have your image if it's already online, if it's on Facebook or another site where you have your image host, hosted, then you can just simply put the URL to the image and then add a title and it would be inserted. You can also, <coughs> if you go back to insert media, you can also upload the file. So if we didn't have any files or if we needed a new image, then you see this familiar interface where we can drop the files in or select the file from our desktop. So I'll cancel that because we already have the image that I need. So I'll just select the image, this handsome fellow here, and we have a couple of options. Now it says about because that's the name of the image, so by default it will be titled whatever the image is named. I just want to change this and since it's supposed to be an image of me, I put my name and for the caption you could use my name and this will appear below the image and as I mentioned the alt text is just to tell search engines what the image is about and you can add a description which is really for your purposes and then you can go ahead and okay let me go back not sure what happened there okay let's start again Add media. Select our image. And we have the option to align our image. Now, if we choose none, then the image will be placed wherever we have our cursor. And if you notice, I had some text on the page, so I want this image to appear to the left of the text. So I'll put that there, and we can also add a link to this image. So if I wanted to link to another page on my site, or a page that's off my site, then I'll just simply put the image here. By default, the location of the image will appear in, in this tag which and once we're finished now in terms of size it's just something I want to point out here right because the image that I uploaded is is so small then it's the only size that you see here but what WordPress does is if if you upload a large image it will automatically create a couple of different sizes depending on how large your image is and what you would have been able to do is select the particular size from this drop down list but because like I said this image is so small then it's the only one that I have available so I can just select insert into page and it's not doing what I wanted it to do okay but no worries we can go in and fix it um, just by clicking on the image you see these two options now the, the icon on the right will delete the image and the icon on the left will allow you to edit the image so we go back to a, a screen that's similar to the one that we just used and let me try to right align it and you have the option 
excuse me, if this were a large image to reduce the size, of course you can still reduce this image even though it's quite small. And if you notice to the right here, you can see a preview of how your image will look in your post. So I'm going to right align it. Of course, you can center or left align. So I'm going to right align it and update. And it's still not quite doing what I want it to do. So, and this is how it is sometimes. Sometimes it doesn't work out perfectly. Uh, let me try putting my cursor here. And sometimes you do have to play around with it. If you add image. Align left, insert into page. And, and there you go. That's more like what I wanted. Okay, so you see our image, it's aligned to the left of the text. You see our caption, which says my name. And we have successfully inserted an image into our page. In this video, I'll show you real quickly how to add a video to your site and do this. So you simply create a new post. Add new. Let's just call it video. And um, chances are you'd want to say this is the, this, this a, a title for the video. Put your cursor where you want the video to go and simply add media. And if you remember, we had already uploaded, uploaded a video to our media library, but you could also insert from a URL. So if you have your video hosted separately or independently uh, on a site such as Amazon S3, you could just put the URL and uh, WordPress will pick up that it is a video file. For example, as long as the file has, let's say, a .mp4 or WMA or FLV, which is Flash, then it will detect it and automatically embed. But let's go back, and since we have this video here, then we have the, the option on the right here that says Embed Media Player or linked media file. Now if you link to media file what you'd want to do what you probably want to do is is put an image and then that image would link to the actual video. But we're just going to add embed media file select insert and what has happened is that WordPress has created a short code for a video player because what you have upload here or online is a video but to play the video on your site you need a video player so WordPress has just created this video player for you and you can see here it just has a short code for the video the size of the video 640 in width and 360 in height and this is the default and you can change this if you'd like just by editing these numbers here and you will see it is linking to this to the location of the video which is on our site in the uploads folder and it would do the same if the video was hosted anywhere else and all we have to do now is click publish and if we view the post There you go. There is our video. There's the caption for our video. And if we select play, the video will play. 
and as you can see here the video takes is centered in a post and if you wanted a larger video like I mentioned before all you would have to do is go back and just edit these numbers here so as you can see I could make it a little wider so if I made it 740 and made it a little higher 460 and if we update And it's taken a while, just, just because I'm using software to record this video, and it just slows down the processing speed of my computer. But if we can just go over now and view the post, and you see our video has gotten a little larger. And that's how you embed what we call a self-hosted video. In the next video, I'll show you how to embed a video from YouTube or a similar site. In this video, I'll show you real quickly how to embed a video from YouTube on your site. Um, the process is pretty similar if you are embedding videos from other sites such as Vimeo or Dailymotion or similar sites. But I'll just show you on YouTube so you get the gist of what we're doing. So first, I want to create a page. You can use a page or a post, it really doesn't matter. I'm going to create a page. And I'm just going to call it video. And we're just going to go over to YouTube and once you found the video that you want to embed then you go down below the video where it says share and click the tab that says embed now there are two ways to do this and the first way is by using an iframe and that will be the default and basically what an iframe is is just basically a placing an exact version of a video or text or page from another video onto your site and once you've copied this code and before you copy this code let me just show you a few more things now you see an op uh, a, a box here that says show suggested videos when the video finishes now I suggest that you untick this because what will happen is that once your video is finished playing it will show other videos from YouTube and then people can get distracted from the content on your site and even go over to, to YouTube and leave your site and that's not what you want you want people to remain on your site and watch your videos so I suggest you remove that but it's totally up to you you have the option and there's another option that says use old embed code and I'll get back to that. So for now we have our iframe code and we are just going to go back to our site. And in a WYSIWYG editor, whenever you're adding any bit of code to your site, you should go over to the tab that says text and it's right beside the tab that says visual. So what is here is all code and you just post that and then you go back to the visual and you will see basically an outline for where your video will be you won't see the video until the the poster page goes live and what i'll do now is just actually just put some space and just another video and i'll show you the other option that's available on YouTube for embedding videos. So if we go back over to YouTube and we select 
use old embed code but before I do that um, I'm just going to show you this option that says video size you can do this with either the iframe or the old embed code and based on the dimensions of your post or page area you can determine how large you want the video to be and of course you can also do a custom size okay so you'll be able to set the width and the height so these are the standard sizes for video and so what I'll do now is just go down to the old embed code and what this is is HTML code so the first code was an iframe and this code is HTML now you may be asking me why what's the difference and why would I want to use HTML well the simple answer is that the HTML code gives you more options and you know what let me select a bigger size video just so you can see the difference um, what happens with the HTML code is that you can from this code manipulate it to do additional things like make the video autoplay and so on and so forth so now that we have this code we can go back over to our site and again we have to go back over to the text mode but let me just show you a little trick whenever I'm adding code it's when you get over to the the text screen it's a bunch of symbols and and if you don't if you're not really familiar with code it can be a little confusing so what I do is like to place a marker so I just put a bunch of X's from the visual screen and then I go over to text and as you can see there's a bunch of tags here and this is all code but if you look here you you see my X's so what I do is just highlight the X's and then I'll paste the HTML code so my code will go exactly where I want it to go and if we go back over to our visual you see another video has been added and of course you can go ahead and do the other adjustments you want to your page allow comments etc but I'm just going to go ahead and publish this page And now we can go ahead and view the page. Okay, so the same video using two different methods for embedding the video from YouTube. And if we just go back and go to the text module. Now, if you wanted to change the dimensions of the video, you could just adjust the height and the width. And like I said, with the HTML code, there is a lot more you could do than just adjusting the height and the width. But just remember, if you want to adjust the height and the width with the HTML version, the height and width are also are actually two places in the code near the beginning and near the end so that's just something to look for and that's how easy it is to embed a video from YouTube in the next set of videos we're going to take a look at uh, configuring our site now WordPress initially started out as a blogging platform and by default you will see that your website is basically set up as a blog with all your posts on the home page of your site. But this is very easy to, to change and it really is up to you whether you want to have your site as a straight blog or you want to have a traditional website without posts or have a combination of both. If we go to our home page and I'm just looking at this site in a private browsing tab so that we don't see the additional information at the top to edit because we're logged in and if we just go to our home page 
you will see all our posts listed on the front. Now by default this is how your site will be set up with WordPress and uh, additionally we've created some pages and those are being displayed as well in our menu. Now so if you want to achieve uh, a blog only platform for your website then basically what you have to do is not create pages and only create posts or if you create pages then you can use your custom menus to basically remove them from the navigation and then put links to your posts for specific pages that you want to reveal to your users or for example if you only just want to have like an about me page or contact page and if you also want to have a more traditional site where you have no posts then what we do is to go into our dashboard and go to settings and go to reading <coughs> and you will see an option that says front page displays now as you can see the radio button has selected your latest posts as we said before this is the default but you can put a static page and where it says front page and you can select one of the pages that you have already created so in this case I'm going to use our about me page and if we wanted to have only pages on our site we select save changes go back to our home page and, and of course this would be useful if you have for example a business site and you wanted to have a specific home page a landing page where you have something like a slider on the front of your services or the products that you offer and then tabs <coughs> with the links to other pages etc so if, if that's what you want to achieve and if, if we just re refresh we see the changes so here we are we have an about me page which has now been used as our home page so we are at the the home page of our site and the only other pages are the pages that we created and of course you do have a link to your posts in your sidebar and this is easy to achieve and we look at that when we start to look at widgets but all you'd have to do is simply remove the recent posts from your sidebar and your page would not have posts at all displayed anywhere now if you wanted to do a combination of both where you still have a static page that wherever, whenever users come to your site they land on that specific page whether you want to show them your services or you want to build a mailing list or whatever it is but you still want to have posts on your website and what you do is to go ahead and create a new page and for example you can call this page blog or news or updates whatever it is that you want to, to call it it's up to you and you won't put any content on this page and you simply publish that page and if we go back to our settings and reading then where it says posts page then you would select that page from the list so blog and then you have some options here to say that your blog pages will show at most 10 posts and you can edit this number if you'd like I put 5 
and the same for your syndication feeds which is which are your RSS feeds the amount of posts to show in those feeds at any one time and you can select if for the for the articles in your feed if you want to show all the text or just a summary and there's just one more option here which uh, which speaks to search engine visibility and this is if you want to basically keep your search private then you can request that search engines not index it now the search engines will, engines will decide whether or not they want to honor this request so it's not foolproof but um, basically you know if, you, if it is a public site if you're trying to get build your brand and your business then you, you, you wouldn't want to tick, tick this box but there may be reasons why you would want to in fact tick this box to discourage search engines from indexing the site so if we save the changes here because what we're trying to achieve is a, a static front page a landing page and our blog posts on a separate page and there's just one more thing we'd have to do for, under appearance we have to go to menus because of course we are using a custom menu for our site so for that page that says blog to show up we'd have to add it to our menu so just like add to menu and we can course drag this page to wherever we want it in the order and I'm just going to leave it at the end for now and if we save the menu and we go back to our site and update and refresh and whenever, whenever you make changes just, just, just to make this point whenever you make changes whether you're making posts or changing options you should always save or update we go back over to our site while that's been done and if we refresh the page then you will see that our home page is still showing this about me page but now we have a page that says blog and all our posts now appear on that page so there you have it that's how you that those are the options so if you want a site that just only has pages or if you want a site that only has posts or if you want both and that's exactly how you do it in this video we will look at creating custom menus um, custom menus will really just allow you to really take full control of your the navigation on your website and to do this we go to appearance and menus and just one thing to note that depending on the theme that you are using then this menu may be slightly different you may see additional options you may see multiple areas for, for menus it really does depend but but no matter the theme the, the the concept is pretty much the same okay so if we just go back over to our site you will see that and and let me just say that since the last video i just went ahead in preparation for this video I, I went ahead and created another page and a few posts with under a new category called football for for demonstration purposes okay so if you see the site looking a little different then that's what has happened so by default what has happened is that all the pages that we have been created have been added to our menu and based on what I'm seeing here they've just been added in alphabetical order now you can take full control of this you can put the video page here in whatever order that you please in your menu and you can also add categories to your menu so if we go back over to our menu option now what we need to do is give our menu a name so 
there are no custom menus in this theme so we have the option to just type in a name here or we can go ahead and create a new menu from the option here and so we can just call this main menu and this is just for our purposes to know what the menu is for <coughs> and we can just go ahead and select create menu and to add items to our menu then on the left hand side where you see a list of all your pages and well we only have four pages so but you would have had the option to view all and to search for specific pages if you had a lot of pages in your site so I'm just going to select all these pages and select add to menu <coughs> okay so as you can see here now all our pages are under our main menu now to move around the order of the pages you simply put the cursor and if you see this the icon here up here and whatever page or link is at the very top here would be the first that would be displayed on the menu so if you wanted this to show last then you would put it at the bottom and so on and so forth so another thing we can do is to have sub menus so if for example another page was a sub page for our sample page to get it to show below our sample page as a drop down we simply just drag it out to the right and it will appear in our menu so in in our navigation this will appear as the main page but when we hover over it another page will be shown just below it okay and we can also add links so it does not only have to be pages that we've created on our site you can just also add a link so for example all you have to do is click on this drop down arrow put the link so say for example you had another website or if you wanted to link to your Facebook page or your YouTube channel and you just put the URL there and what you wanted the text to say so I'll just say like us on Facebook and then you can add to menu And then from there you can again just drag and place this page wherever you want in the order and I'm just going to stop this video here because it's getting a little long and in the next video I'll show you how to add categories to your menu okay so to add a category to your menu and this is I mentioned before if you have say a sports site which is the example I used and you have different kinds of sports and you wanted to just have a link or a page with all the different types of sports and and have it categorized then what you do is that when you are creating your post you put them in the respective categories and like I said I have created some posts with the category football and <clears throat> I'll just select add to menu and it's been added to our menu and if you notice these drop down arrows beside each of the pages and links you have additional options so as you can see the, the category of football has a 
common F there. I want to have a capital F just to maintain uniformity. And we have some additional options here where we could move this item one up. We can place it under another page or we can move it to the very top. And we can also remove it completely from our custom menu. Okay. Just one more thing I want to show you with our menu. Custom menu. Is that you can add a link. That. Isn't clickable. And what do I mean by this? So for example, if you had services on your site, so you offer different services, but you didn't want to create a page that listed all the services, but in your menu, you wanted to have a tab that said services so that persons would go to that tab. And then when they hovered over it, it would, the different services that you offered would be will be shown in the drop down menu. So what you would do here to accomplish that <clears throat> is to put the hashtag or the pound sign and then you would put the text here that says services add to menu And say, for example, one of the services that you wanted to offer was video. So we drag the video below. <coughs> Excuse me. And we would drag the video out to the right so that it would appear as a sub item of this page. And now, once you have customized your menu, to your liking and you can always come back and change this at any time to add new pages then the final set of settings is if you want to auto add pages so it, it in other words it will ask if you want to automatically add new top level pages to this menu and it's up to you if you want to use this but if you're creating a custom menu you know you may want to be careful about this option because of course new pages would you know change the order of your menu so I won't tick this and then we have theme locations. So these are the locations for the menus within the, the theme. And there are two options here. You can see one that says top primary menu and another that's a secondary menu in left sidebar. Now the, the menu that we have been viewing is the top primary menu. And if you don't know where a particular menu is you could also always just click it and then check your site and see where the change is made just to know exactly where it is so i just want to make these changes i put this custom menu to my top primary menu so i'm just going to click save save menu Okay, so if we go back over now to our site and we just refresh, then you will see some changes have occurred with our menu. All the items are being displayed exactly how we had them from our custom menu. So about new pages first, our like us page, and this should link to Facebook as we had set up and if we go back over then here we have a drop down page which is our another page on our sample page we have our football page and if we click on this page then all our posts that fall under the category of football will be shown on this page and last but not least for services if you 
clicked on it, as you see I'm clicking here, then it will go nowhere, but once we hover over it, then the video page will be displayed, and if, if we click on video, then it will take us to that page. Okay? So, that is how custom menus work.